Uh, so tonight's staff's going to do an overview of uh, current canvas law, some of the decisions, ramifications um, that the board needs to consider. But again, the major purpose tonight um, is really to, to solicit resident input in terms of um, some of the decisions the board has to make, uh, which they will be at a, a future date. So I'm going to kick it off, and then we'll have some staff jump in. If the village attorney jumps in, he may take part of this. If not, I'll, I'll do it. Um, so um, basically, um, Public Act 101.027 created the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act. It's effective January 1st next year. And so again, the highlights tonight, uh, overview, uh, zoning options, impact on public safety. We'll talk about revenues also. Uh, 33 states have legalized marijuana broadly in some form, while 11 states and the nation's capital have legalized rec recreational use. Uh, Denver leads the way in the U.S. when it comes to on-site consumption, and they allow for business-like restaurants and coffee shops that already exist to apply for separate indoor areas in their facility where individuals are allowed to consume edibles and pot vapor. <clears throat> So some of the general provisions, it applies uh, to, to only 20, 21 years and older. Um, you can legally possess up to 30 grams of cannabis, 500 milligrams of THC-infused products, and 5 grams of cannabis concentrate. Um, it will still remain illegal to smoke marijuana in public places or to drive while under the influence. Uh, personal cannabis will be allowed in most private residences, but is not prohibited in, uh, but not in prohibited areas, including any public place or in close physical proximity to underage persons. Homegrown cannabis will be limited to authorized medical cannabis participants and is limited to five plants. <coughs> um, so questions for, uh, for us is can the consumption and possession of cannabis be banned by local municipality? And the answer is no, we cannot ban or override the law. Uh, however, we can enforce uh, related ordinances consistent with the act, such as violations for consumptions in public places and schools. Uh, what does the law allow us to do? It allows us to choose whether uh, we will allow or prohibit the local retail sale or on-premise consumption of adult use cannabis by businesses within our jurisdiction. So um, essentially, you know, there is, there's really a couple of choices here. One, the choice to opt out. If a municipality chooses to opt out, it may adopt and enforce local ordinances to regulate the possession, pu public consumption, cultivation, growing, processing, dispensing, and transporting of adult use cannabis, as long as the regulations and penalties are consistent with the CRTA. The choice to permit uh, means that if we allow it, it we can we are allowed to exact zoning ordinance and regulations, which again we'll talk about in a little bit, that designate the time, place, manner, and number of cannabis business operations. This would also include requiring minimum distances not only between uh, cannabis locations, but also between cannabis business locations and certain types of other municipalities throughout the uh, the village. Additionally, we would have authority over whether on-premise on use is allowed, and also we could opt in and may in, impose a municipal purchase, purchase excise tax on um, adult cannabis products of up to 3% of the purchase price. So again, a little bit more on the uh, revenue. Um, <clears throat> essentially, it's, it depends on the THC levels, but the um, uh, at the, the state is going to tax sales at 10% for cannabis with THC levels at or less than 35%. Uh, 25% uh, for cannabis with the THC levels above 35%. And then 20% for cannabis infused products such as edibles. Um, so for municipalities, the rate of tax cannot exceed 3% of the dispensary's gross receipts from the sale of non-medical cannabis. And if we do decide to impose this, this tax uh, can only be imposed in quarter uh, percent increments. So in addition, um, the state's regular state sales tax of 6.25% uh, 
uh, applies along with uh, any potential local taxes we may apply. And they, it is collected and enforced by the Department of Revenue. Uh, the next two slides really are just charts that kind of show what other communities are doing and you know uh, there's a variety of communities that permit are permitting prohibited undecided in our area there's a couple communities Orland Park and Mokina that have decided not to do it some are still considering um, but this is obviously you know with the opt-out decision um, coming up January 1st, there's a lot of communities making decisions uh, right now. So uh, now I'm going to have uh, Kimberly come up and talk a little bit about uh, essentially what a cannabis facility, if it's built, would look like and just some of the zoning considerations. Sure. Good evening. Zoning. Okay. So we have a few slides to show you some examples of some facilities currently we have here in Worth, Illinois, mixed use building here um, of a location. Next slide, we have here in Evanston, where you can see it's in a, uh, a mixed use within the first floor, kind of blend in with the, um, the building. We have here in Joliet Road, or excuse me, in Joliet, um, where this is more of a cultivation center, where you see that in an industrial area. <coughs> Obviously, they need a lot of space because they're cultivating. So that's just kind of a quick view of what you can see, how some of these facilities can look like. So in 2014, the village did enact some text amendments to allow medical cannabis cultivation facilities, as well as medical cannabis dispensing facilities. And medical cannabis cultivation facilities currently are a special use in the ORI district as well as medical cannabis dispensing is a special use in the M1. Currently, Tinley Park has zero medical cannabis dispensaries. They are prohibited in areas zoned residential. Um, it might be hard to read, but here is a map um, at one point that was um, presented when we were reviewing this text amendment. This is the cultivation locations and uh, where the village would permit them. Um, again, they are special use in the ORI. The next is a slide that shows where the dispensaries could be located, but based on our zoning, we only allow them in the M1. So very limited areas in town where those facilities can locate currently. So when we're looking at this, the recreational cannabis dispensaries we know may open January 1 of 2020 with the state license. We're asking, you know, the community, should the village choose to opt out of permitting this use? And if not, what zoning districts are appropriate? Should dispensaries be permitted or conditional uses? So the zoning process for that, if the policy question is, should recreational cannabis be a permitted or special use? A permitted use, just to be clear, is something that is allowed by right. It wouldn't require them to go to the plan commission. It would be a simple business license application, change of use with the building department, and they can operate. That would not require any board approval either. Special use process, this is where we look at the use in consideration of where they're looking to locate, and it would require a plan commission process, a public hearing, which then would be recommended to the village board. That could take approximately 60 to 90 days. And again, ultimately the vote would lie at the village board level. But additionally, we may need to approve a text amendment for recreational cannabis dispensaries if we decide to make this a permitted use. We also may need to add definitions to the zoning ordinance as well if we would like to allow this in our community. In our community, we have several zoning districts that we would have to take into consideration if we were to allow these in our community. I've listed all the various districts. I'll quickly walk through them. Uh, the first district being the legacy district, and even within that district, we have other sub-districts. So I think in general, we need to have a conversation if we want to allow it in the downtown at all. Currently, the medical cannabis dispensaries are prohibited in all the legacy districts. So if we want to mimic the medical, uh, we could easily mimic the recreational in the, the legacy code. Um, but the legacy code is a variety of um, districts that are mixed use. Some are strictly residential, some are civic, uh, some have a mixture of commercial or residential that can go there. 
The B1 district is our lowest business district. We call it our neighborhood shopping center. And it's really intended to provide areas for retail, to supply convenience goods for the daily needs of the residents living in these adjacent residential neighborhoods. Typical things you see are pharmacies, florist shops, barber shops, banks. Uh, a note that um, taverns and packaged liquors uh, stores are currently special uses in these districts, and tobacco stores are currently not permitted in these districts. The um, B1s are mostly limited to the 80th Avenue corridor. There's about eight properties zoned the B1 district. They're on the intersections of 167th, 171st, and 179th, all which are in close proximity to residential areas. And we have um, a picture of just kind of a sampling of some of the centers that you'll be familiar with that are, are B1. Um, you know, again, mix of uses in there, mostly kind of serving the immediate area. B2 is our next district as you move up. And this is the community shopping district where we look for more a wider variety of retail type businesses with personal uses and other complementary uses. Um, they are permitted uses that not, ne not necessarily serve the nearby residences, but would bring other people from the other areas. Um, the only area, though, that we have zoned B2 in Tinley Park is the area fronting 159th Street between Harlem and Oak Park Avenue. This includes the Bremen Town Mall, which includes Menards, and the Tinley Plaza, which has Waltz. Both properties front major commercial corridors. Um, they were developed as planned unit developments, which provide additional flexibility within those zoning, zoning regulations. But that is the only B2 district that we have currently in the community. Uh, when staff was looking at the potential recreational use, we, we kind of kind of grew a, an idea that it would be more of a regional draw. Um, we expect that this would be something similar to big box retailers. Assuming recreational cannabis will function similarly, the village might look to the higher intense commercial districts, which would be our B3. Uh, this is where you do see our largest shopping centers, such as Brookside Marketplace, the Convention Center. They are located along major transportation systems as LaGrange Road and Harlem Avenue, and they are our usually largest shopping centers. Uh, it should be noted that packaged liquor stores are permitted in a B3. Um, again, recreational cannabis would require you to be of 21 years of age. Um, if we treat it similar to, to packaged liquor, this could be a potential um, district that we might consider, being that these are more of our regional shopping centers. And here's just a few samplings of where we have some uh, current vacancies in our shopping centers along 159th um, in Harlem. Our B4 is more of our office and service business district. It's, um, you know, more for smaller transition businesses between residential and commercial areas. The majority of the area zone B4 have been developed with office uses, with the exception of Rubino's Plaza at Oak Park Avenue. And they are located along Harlem Avenue at 163rd, 167th, and 171st. Um, there are no significant parcels zoned before. There's approximately 30, which includes Walgreens, Ingalls Family Care Center, various medical practitioners, and post, the post office, St. George Church and Banks. And this is kind of the uh, look you see in the B4. It really is more orientated to the, that office type of use. Our B5 district, we've designated as our automotive service district. Again, this primarily is along 159th Street. Um, that is servicing our car dealerships, uh, the supportive businesses that are more for the vehicles, gas stations, car washes. There are a few small strip centers, um, but this has been our, our major corridor for those types of uses. Next, we have our office and restricted industrial district. Again, noted medical cannabis cultivation facility is listed as a special use permit in this district. It's for medium to large office buildings, research activities, and non-objectionable industrial activities. Um, there are numerous areas in town zoned RI. 
They are mostly clustered along the south side of 183rd Street between 80th Avenue and Harlem Avenue. Many of them were developed as planning developments, which allow for mixes of uses, including M1 and B3. The largest tract of vacant land zoned ORI is the former State Mental Health Center. Second to that are properties west of Brookside Marketplace, adjacent to Panduit's headquarters. The third is at LaGrange Road and 183rd Street, um, where there's some future land to be redeveloped. That's kind of a, a, a aerial view of what you see in our ORI districts, again, servicing many um, you know, small contractor shops, um, small businesses, um, and more of your kind of warehouse, uh, tilt-up panel looking kind of buildings. M1, general manufacturing, this is our industrial area that um, we have only a few areas in town that are designated as M1. The first is located west of 80th Avenue and between 183rd Street and I-80. The second is off Prosperity Drive and Oak Park Avenue just south of I-80. Medical cannabis dispensing facility is listed as a special use permit in the M1 district. And this is uh, a quick shot of our M1 district. There's not a lot uh, future area planned for M1. We've pretty much built that area out with the exception near the amphitheater. There's some property still zoned M1. So the process for us would be if the village were to amend the zoning to permit recreational cannabis dispensaries, we would need to make text amendments to the zoning ordinance. Would there be a public hearing before the plan commission? Definitions would need to be created, modifications to the zoning provisions, and first off, we need to identify if it will be permitted or special use and specifically what districts. We could possibly um, place other restrictions such as distance requirements as part of that. Uh, we can be up to 1,500 feet from one business to another, or we can be less. And then ultimately, we would require village board approval by the ordinance. So again, um, amending the uh, current district to match medical cannabis could be one, one way where we make recreational similar to medical cannabis, which would limit it to the ORI or M1. We could look at specific business districts and we can look at making it conditional or a special use. Um, it's kind of the direction we'd be looking for from the community. I've given you a sampling of hopefully how you can see how the business districts function and how they look and uh, where we think they could go. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or gladly love to hear feedback from the community and, and where they think it's most appropriate. Thanks, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Good evening. Let me just speak briefly about uh, some of the issues with public safety. Uh, as, a general, as a general rule, the public use is prohibited. A public place is defined as any place where a person could reasonably be expected to be observed by others. Civil or criminal pen, uh, penalties are smoking cannabis in a public place, possessing cannabis and using cannabis on school grounds, possessing over the legal amount, driving under the influence, medical patients transferring medical can cannabis to non-patients, using cannabis by a law enforcement officer while on duty, using cannabis by a commercial driver's license or a CDL while on duty. Uh, we also are at the mercy of the legislature right now is because the final draft, is, or the final law has not been put forth, and as soon as it is, we are gonna have to adopt the ordinances because some of these are criminal now, but they might become ordinances for us in the future. Uh, we also have to adapt based on Will and Cook County because Will County will, will, will adhere to the 30 grams or less where Cook County will not prosecute less than 100 grams. So it's something that we have to address, but we'll have to do that uh, at, the, at the police department. Also, there's around 800,000 cases that need to be expunged for an arrest, an arrest charge, order of supervision, uh, or order of qualified probation for minor cannabis offenses. We have yet to determine what a minor cannabis offense is as well. Uh, currently, we believe it's under 30 grams, uh, but like I said, with Cook County, it's under 100. I don't know if they're going to expunge more or if they're just gonna stick to the 30. That's to be determined. We will continue, continue to conduct investigations, establishing probable cause, determine search and seizure procedures, and addressing public safety concerns. Same standard of behavior 
is alcohol. Consumption of marijuana while driving is prohibited, and driving under the influence of marijuana is treated similarly to driving under the influence of alcohol. Right now, though, there is not a field sobriety test. Uh, there is a field sobriety test for marijuana based on, on uh, vertical gaze nystagmus. But other than that, we don't have a breathalyzer or anything. They're, they're trying to develop something similar to a DUI. It's going to be very challenging for law enforcement to enforce and to, uh, to go forward with. But it is the state law. We're going to have to adapt. We're going to have to uh, look for ways to determine how to uh, detect cannabis other than smell. Right now, at least, we have the pungent odor. We can, uh, we can uh, do that, but we're going to have to uh, work, with, uh, work with the state. We're going to have to update our training, and we're just going to have to uh, continue to <coughs> seek ways to enforce it. It's going to be difficult. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. All right, so next steps, um, obviously, you know, we're, we're taking input tonight, but for those who cannot make it, uh, we also are doing a community night, community wide survey, which will be open through November 24th. Uh, the address is, is on the slide here. And so we encourage you to, to fill it out and we're going to share the results from that survey with the board at our next discussion on this on the third. And so again, the, the timeline um, is after this, the survey closes as the board will meet on the third review all input and survey results. Um, and the decision would then be uh, on the December 17th to opt out or permit. So that's it.